Well, okay, uh, we're starting right now, gentlemen. This is what they call the King Tut collection that I've uh, recreated. I've had done half of it before, but now I've added on to the collection larger and more beautiful pieces and different pieces. The King Tut collection is of an era of a... Many people have false ideas about the era of the King Tut. They make it mystical, they make it all kinds of spooky things, but it is not. It is a king and a queen that once lived in the era of that period of time, just like we have a king and a queen in, in Holland and Belgium and France and England. There's no spookiness about it. It's just the era. We have a president of the United States and we vote them in every year. It's just human beings getting together, deciding to make a government. And that's what happened with the King Tut collection. The king and the queen of Egypt were exactly that, the king and queen. And their families kept on going on and on and on for hundreds of years. They discovered it later on, and it kind of intrigued me because I always heard stories when I was young that the king Tut was mystical and it was this and it was that. And then later on in life, as I study about it, and I look at all the other Egyptian uh, history and Greek history and Roman history, and it goes on and on and on and on, I then all of a sudden came to realize it is just an era, a period of time of mankind. That's all it is. It's not a god, and it never will be a god, although the king thought was considered a god while they were alive because they didn't even know who God was. He did not exist at that time. But anyway, so I've created it and I put gold on it because gold was the most important thing to only the royalties were allowed to wear the gold. So I made sure that I came close to that period of time and studied it uh, quite a ways for many years to make sure that I kind of stayed close to what they believed in. But today we have different things. We have new things today. We have new gold. We have uh, instead of uh, glass beads. Now we have real emeralds. Now we have real diamonds. Now we have real rubies, sapphires. This is all real now. In that period of time, they had mostly glass beads and gold. But in this period of time uh, that I could get my hands on emeralds, sapphires, and rubies, I enhanced those on it because that's my period of time. And I broke all rules and all regulations as far as every university and every college that teaches art, they tell you not to use this and not to use I It didn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter anymore. This is a new generation. The new generation is going to come up with something that's entirely different. And because the boredom of painting a painting, a skin tone painting, uh, we've done that for generations. And I had to break away from that because it was boring. It was like Picasso broke away from the... Uh, the portrait uh, idea too. Picasso went completely broke away and made it modern. He made abstracts, which I didn't understand when I was young. I thought, boy, what kind of, excuse my expression, what kind of garbage is that? But it wasn't, because if you understand it when you get a little older on, that was his expression. Rembrandt, which was one of the finest paintings, broke away also. Rembrandt became Rembrandt, not because of what he used to do, but because of what he did later. He broke away from all traditions and decided to now go ahead and paint people on the street. That upset the Dutch people because the very wealthy paid a lot for a portrait. Hey, you got a cover on that thing, but let's keep on going, okay? I'm just, I'm just pulling, I'm just pulling these gentlemen's legs because sometimes I need to keep them sharp, you know. Anyway, I'm going to sign this piece right here, and uh, I have a. A very dear friend of mine, which is Ron Bush. He's quite a believer and quite a collector in the fine arts. Uh, I, he's like a baby in a candy store. He sees my talent and he, I'm most likely to make him go broke. He doesn't think he can go broke because he's a very wealthy man, but I'm looking for the last time he has in his pocket because artists usually do, because we love to do what we do, and what we do is for mankind. When I pass away, this is wealth in the United States that Mr. Bush has put together and kept 
and made sure that it was protected while he was collecting these pieces. Now I'm almost out of wind because I've been up since 2 o'clock this morning working. I work from 2 until about 10, 11 o'clock. I sleep maybe 2, 3 hours and that's the end of me. And this is the end of me. I'm going to sign this piece. It's called Tutankhamun. And now from what I understand he put me back to work again because now he wants the same size painting. I don't know, I'm trying to get rid of Mr. Bush. I've tried every which way. I asked him to get in the back of the car, to pick out something in the trunk, but he's too smart for that. I could back it up, you know what I'm talking about, and get rid of Mr. Bush. But no, instead he comes to visit me and he says, no, he could use another piece. He could use this one nepotite. I said, okay, back to work I go. I'm going to sign this piece now, and I think you kind of understand what this is all about. Now this piece is valued at 12 million. Today it's worth 12 million dollars. I'm 73 years old. This piece here will be will be at the treasure in the United States. Just like the Night Watch in in Holland, the Night Watch is protected by the government because their currency is backed up by the paintings that Rembrandt did. The same thing is going to happen in the United States. The currency of the United States is not worth a plum nickel today unless it has something of tangible to where the world wants it. And the world wants art. They always do and never will stop wanting art. That's why they steal it. That's why they kill for it. That's why they do whatever they can for it because art is the number one asset in the world. Now, it doesn't matter if you own a house and gold is ridiculous today and everything else is. So the only way that you can uh, make money, really, is invest in the art. And make sure that when you do that, you love what you see. So you never get hurt. Because if you spend a lot of money on, on a painting, then you can wait patiently. Because you did buy something that you bought. And in your living room or in your office, it's hanging in there. And if you are trying to sell it, and it takes two, three, four, five years, it doesn't matter because you still have the enjoyment of the art. I'm going to sign this painting right now with my, let's see, left hand. I can use my right hand, but he put me in the corner and on the opposite side, so I'll just have to do it this way. And not Done. Thank you very much, and I hope we see you again. Goodbye. <laughs>